Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Nirman. I'm officially doing my third installment of The Barracks. This is a video series where I'll be showing you guys some of the in-game footage of a video game, which just so happens to be Black Ops, and translating it into a real-life scenario, or just discussing the weapon in a life perspective. So with that said, guys, we're going to be jumping off into the series known as the AUG. The AUG is a very interesting weapon. It's actually classified into a variety of types, which I was kind of surprised about, uh, along with, you know, just different facts about the weapon, which we'll be getting into here soon. But with that said, I'm going to discuss the types of weapons that it is classified or resembles. The type of weapon it can resemble is the assault rifle, the submachine gun, and the light machine gun. And all three of those, you can kind of look at the AUG and kind of, you know, pick out little key things that you can kind of look at and be like, yep. That makes sense, you know, the magazine size for the LMG. You can look at the assault rifle design overall and the submachine gun probably mobility rate just due to the fact that it has a foregrip, which would enable you to, you know, have a little bit more mobility compared to just grabbing the, you know, uh, barrel or anything of that assortment. The place of origin is actually Austria, which uh, I was actually surprised about. I didn't realize that it was made in that country. So overall, you know, congratulations to them for making a very well designed weapon. It was brought into service in 1979, and it's still being used in today's setting, which is pretty cool. I mean, I presume that their government is still using this uh, sheer weapon just because it's uh, something to hope uphold to the highest honor. With that said, this weapon has actually seen its fair share of wars, and it's actually been issued into a few that are currently ongoing right now. The Afghanistan War and the Iraq War, which are currently still going on versus, uh, and you know, those countries with the United States military and other countries that have jumped in and decided to fight against the... Uh, everlasting cause which is you know kind of unknown but at the same point we kind of understand hopefully as a civilian in any manner with that said it's also seen its fair share in the Syrian civil war which was occurring a couple months back and that was something that was really widely spread over the news and talked about and I presume it's still probably occurring in different parts of that country but overall you know the designers this is where we're gonna get into a little bit of complications on saying the name so I'm gonna try to do this the best I can Overall, uh, don't expect them to be pronounced exactly correct. Uh, we have Horst w Wesp, I guess that's how you pronounce it. And we have two Carls. We have Carl Wagner and Carl Moiser, which, uh, you know, it's pretty cool. I, I doubt they're brothers because they don't share the same last name, so that would make no sense for them to be brothers in any case. But overall, I'm sure they're pretty good friends or something that decided to sit down at a table, make some uh, blueprints of a weapon, and, you know, manufacture a lot of copies of it. It was designed in 1977, and the overall manufacturers consist of a ton of people, but unfortunately I cannot pronounce them all, so I'm just going to say one of them, the main one that I actually have a clue on how to pronounce for you guys. The SME Ordinance is one of them, and there are a few others, so if you guys are interested, you can for sure Google the weapon. I'm sure you can get like a Wikipedia page or something that'll come up and show you guys the other people if you're interested in giving props to the other manufacturers. Unfortunately, I just... I'm not good enough to pronounce the facilities and the manufacturers that have, you know, produced and recognized the weapon for its potential. With that said, we're going to jump into when it was produced. It was produced in 1978 to present day, that's the standard version, and 1988 to present in the para. So the para must be a different form of the weapon or a different attachment that was selected for the weapon's varieties. So now, guys, we're going to jump into the specifications of the weapon that consists of weight, length, and barrel length. So uh, we got quite a bit to go here, so we're going to just get right into it. We got 3.6 kilograms or 7.9 pounds for the standard version, 3.3 kilograms or 7.3 pounds for the carbine, 3.2 kilograms or 7.1 pounds for the sub-carbine, 3.9 kilograms or 8.6 pounds for the H-bar, the 3.3 kilograms or 7.3 pounds para, and that was for the weight. Now we're going to jump into the length category. This is where uh, the links get a little weird. You're going to go 790 millimeters or 31.1 inches, the standard version. 390 millimeters or 27.2 inches up for the carbine. 300, or I'm sorry, 630 millimeters or 24.8 inches for the subcarbine. 900 millimeters or 35.4 inches for the H bar. 665 millimeters or 26.2 inches for the para. With that said, we're going to jump into the barrel length, and this is again where the you know length of the barrel differs from each version. 508 millimeters or 20.0 inches standard, 407 millimeters or 16.0 inches for the carbine, 350 millimeters or 13.8 inches for the subcarbine, 621 millimeters or 24.4 inches for the H bar, and 420 millimeters or 16.5 inches for the para. So you've got a wide variety of, you know, it looks like uh, categories for the weapon, and you know, it looks like uh, they fit pretty well in the standard 
carbine, subcarbine, H-bar, and para. With that said, it's going to use a cartridge known as the 556 times 45 millimeter NATO round or the 9 by 19 millimeter para parabellum. Ugh, I almost couldn't say that for you guys. The action is going to consist of a gas operated or rotating bolt. It's going to shoot at a rate of fire of about 680 to 750 rounds per minute. With that said, it's going to use a muzzle velocity of 970 meters a second or 3,182 feet per second. So uh, it's pretty fast. And it's going to have an effective range of about 300 meters or 980 feet. With that said, that is not saying that the weapon cannot shoot farther than that, but it's most effective at that selected range. The maximum range it's going to do the most effective damage or, you know, be able to hit the target without losing a significant amount of, uh, you know, potential. It's going to be at 2,700 meters or 8,900 feet, which is a pretty good distance to travel for, especially around. Uh, feed system is a 5.56 by 45 NATO. Um, it's going to do about 30 or 42 round box magazine or beta C mag. 9 by 19 parabellum is going to use a 25 or 32 round P or MPI 69 box magazine. So that's where the LMG factors kind of funnel into this thing. And we're going to go to the sights real quick. It's going to use 1.5 telescopic sight or emergency battle sights variety of optics. So I guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this series. Um, we kind of went through that list pretty quick. I'm sure a lot of that information was a little new to you, and I'm sure it was new to me as well. Just letting you guys know. So an overall fact, just let me know. Let, let me know in the comments if you guys enjoyed this series. I'm going to be continuing, and I'll see you guys in the next installment. This is Nermoid on signing off.